Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome to a very special video. Today, guys, we are going to cover what a dividend is. Now, this is something that I haven't covered here on the channel, to my knowledge, and I really would like to explain to everybody what is a dividend, all the parts that make up a dividend, like the dividend deal, the ex-dividend date, the payout date, that kind of stuff, as well as the amount of money that you would need to invest to get that dividend payment back, so that way it could supplement your income and, of course, the benefits of dividend investing. Now, there are technically two types of dividends that exist. For this video alone, we are going to be taking a look at specifically qualified dividends, all right? Not non-qualified dividends. The only difference is, is that qualified dividends have a different tax bracket than that of non-qualified dividends. That really is it. Everything else should stay roughly the same, all except for a few things here and there that are really minor. But aside from that, that is essentially what we're going to cover today here in the video. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing if you like to join us on the Discord, which is the best place to catch the live streams, the videos, and the shorts. The link is in the description below for that. So with that said, let's get started with this video. So let's actually get started with what in the world is a dividend. And this is from Investopedia, guys. I'm going to give you guys the exact definition. That is, dividends are the percentage of a company's earnings that is paid to its shareholders as their share of the profits. Because remember, when you buy into a ticker, you're not buying into a ticker. You're buying into a company. And the second that you buy one share, you now have the privilege of being an owner of said company. And now you're only one share of several hundred millions or several hundred billions of shares that the company has to offer. But technically, you are an owner of the company, which makes you uh, available to actually access their profits. So one way that the company gives you their profits is through a dividend. And this dividend specifically comes from one thing called the free cash flow, which if you take a look at their financial statements, specifically on Seeking Alpha, because that's what I use. If you take a look at their financial statements under cash flow, you will see something called cash from operations as well as capital X expenditures you get to see right over here cash from operations and capital expenditures and if you take the cash from operations and then you add the capital expenditures that is the free cash flow for the company and this free cash flow is what is used to pay out this dividend which is why in every single one of my videos that i make analyzing a company i take a look at if the cash flow is able to subsidize the dividend to begin with so that is basically, guys, what a dividend is. Now, it's not just stocks that pay out a dividend, it's also ETFs. However, for this case, we're going to take a look at just individual stocks, specifically Apple, because it's the staple for pretty much everybody and everybody knows it. So we're going to take a look at Apple, and we're going to use Apple as a reference for this type of dividend payments. So specifically on Seeking Alpha, if you guys put in any ticker that pays out a dividend, obviously, a company that pays out a dividend, if you put in a ticker specifically for AAPL, you guys can see that we have summary, ratings, financials, earnings, dividends, valuation, growth, profitability, momentum, and others. But for this case, we're going to take a look at the dividends tab. And right then and there, we get a lot of information. For starters, scrolling down, you get certain things that you only get if you pay for the premium service on Seeking Alpha. But if you keep scrolling down, this is available for free for everybody. And this is the thing that will give you a lot of information moving forward as to dividend payments. So taking a look at now all the different components of a dividend, and that is the dividend summary. We can see here that there's a lot of parts to this. The first one that we're going to cover it is the amount as well as the annual payout. So for the amount, this is basically the amount of dividends that you will get per quarter per share. All right. So basically, if you buy one share of Apple at the current price of $237.33, you will be paid 25 cents per quarter per share. And if you guys do the math, per quarter means four times a year. So 25 cents per share per quarter ends up being, well, 25 cents times four ends up being a dollar per share per year, which is what this annual payout actually means. And the reason why I know this whole quarter thing is because 
And the reason why I'm specifically saying quarter is because you guys could see right over here, the dividend frequency, which is quarterly. Basically, this company, Apple, pays their dividends every three months. And we can tell by the payout dates, which is right over here. The payout dates is when you actually get the cash dividend. You guys can see they pay out on 11-14-2024. So this is a company that is a rarity. Not most companies pay out in the off months. And by that, I mean the months outside of March, June, September, and December. Any of those other months, November, January, February, July, those months are usually a rarity and most companies do not pay in those months. So you guys could tell that when it comes to Apple, they specifically pay out in the months of February, May, August, and November. And unfortunately, this is not something that you guys could just buy whenever and you're going to get the dividend whenever. There is a certain time frame that you guys have to buy these shares by and that is this date over here, which is the ex-dividend date. Now, the ex-dividend date, it is the day that you have to buy the shares in order to get paid out by the payout date. Now, something to know here, you cannot buy the shares on that date. You cannot buy the shares on the date of the ex dividend date. You have to buy it 24 hours before. So to get paid for Apple for the month of November, you will have to buy shares before the ex dividend date, which is November 8th. And some people actually like sniping ex dividend dates and then just selling right after the dividend gets paid out. Me personally, though, I am not really a fan of that. I would much rather snipe valuation and not necessarily ex dividend dates because eventually the cycle will repeat and these ex dividend dates and payout dates will come back in February. I would much rather, me personally, I would just rather snipe a good valuation even though the ex dividend date already passed. Now, the next three things that we are going to take a look at, it is the overall dividend safety. We already took a look at one of those, and that is the payout ratio. Now, the payout ratio in Seeking Alpha is actually not in regards to the free cash flow, which is why I mentioned the free cash flow before. Because while this payout ratio that you guys see here is important, I'm not saying that it's not. The cash flow one is significantly more important because again, cash flow is used to pay out these dividends to begin with. This payout ratio over here is actually taken by the earnings per share. In fact, asking Grok very quickly, we can see that the seeking alpha payout ratio is generally based on dividends per share divided by the earnings per share. So earnings guys can be manipulated, right? You just a company just has less shares or buys back a ton of shares and that automatically makes the dividends per share a lot higher making the payout ratio much lower in the sense so this is why i personally don't like using earnings per share payout ratios right i just prefer using the free cash flow because it is a lot cleaner cash from operations less capital expenditures now that being said though if you guys don't really understand the whole cash flow thing yet or just don't really want to learn it, that's fine. Understand that, yes, this is helpful, but it's not entirely the main picture. Now, the next thing that we can take a look at over here, it is the five-year CAGR. And this five-year CAGR is interesting because this tells you, as you guys can see, the attractiveness of the dividend growth rate based on the last five years. Basically, the average as to how much the company has increase this dividend in the past five years so apple has actually increased this dividend of 25 cents around 5.43 percent in the past five years if this thing continues in the next five years most likely they will keep it roughly the same meaning that you can not guarantee but you guys can foresee a 5.43 percent increase every single year for the next five years and the second to last thing on this page, it is the dividend growth years. This tells you the amount of times a company has issued and increased the dividends. Now, both two criteria have to be met in order for this number to go up. You guys can see dividend growth, the number of years of continuous dividend growth, dividends in a given year are calculated by the ex-dividend dates, not the payment date. Only regular, not special dividends are counted. Special dividends are a different story. We're not going to take a look at that. But Basically, Apple has issued a dividend and increased each dividend every single year, which is really, really nice to see. Now, the last thing on this page that is of importance, we did skip over the record date and declared date. Those two things aren't really that important for any of this, so we're going to ignore those. The last thing would be, guys, the dividend yield. And this is something that a lot of people tend to focus on when in reality, it's it's important don't get me wrong it's nice but 
there could be a lot of red flags when when this number gets really really high basically the dividend yield it is a quick way to, to determine if a company is paying out a high yield or not right so basically apple right now is at 0.42 percent really really tiny right really really tiny the way that this is calculated it is taking the annual payout and then dividing that by the current share price meaning that if the current share price keeps going up and this annual payout remains the same because they may only increase it once a year then yeah the dividend yield will keep continuing to go lower now the opposite is also true that if the annual payout remains the same but the share price falls this dividend yield will go high ideally you want a high dividend yield, but it's not just that black and white. There is a lot of gray area. And one of those gray areas is, can the company afford this dividend? Because you see a lot of companies out there with 10, 15, 20% dividend yields. And then you look at the payout ratios in regards to the free cash flow and the payout ratios are upwards of like $200, which means that they can't afford to pay out this dividend with their cash flow to begin with. So where's this dividend yield coming from? How is this thing getting paid? usually debt mainly. So that's not really a healthy dividend yield. Ideally, you want to juggle between these two things. You want to have a decently high dividend yield while at the same time having a moderately low payout ratio. And an example of this is with this company. Now, let me show you guys what this company is. It is the company Chevron, one of my favorite companies out there. And you guys can see that that dividend yield is a lot higher, right? It's a 4.03% with a payout ratio of almost 56%. It is a lot higher, right? It is a lot higher, but it means that you know, 56% of their earnings is going into this overall dividend, not the cash flow, but just understand that it's not the cash flow. However, we can see that the five-year CAGR is a little bit higher and they're paying out this dividend and increasing it for the past 37 years. And the annual payout, it is a whopping $6.52 and quarterly payout, it is $1.63. So that pretty much does it when it comes to all of these things in the dividend summary. Now let's actually learn how to calculate the amount of payments that you kind of want to get when it comes to dividend payments. Now, understand that I'm only going to be talking about just one specific company here. Um, you won't just do this for one, right? You'll do this for all of them, and then all of them are going to add up to that certain amount. But for all intents and purposes, we're going to talk about the company Apple as well as the company Chevron. So let's actually calculate uh, how much in investments you would have to invest in order to get a certain amount of income from Apple every single year. So there are actually two ways to figure this math out. However, I'm going to give you guys the fastest way, and that is using specifically this dividend yield. And well, let's just start off with a number. Let's just start off with the fact that maybe you want $1,000 every single year from Apple. Very, very simple. You take out the calculator, you do 1,000, which is the money that you want out of a dividend, right, from Apple. And then you would divide that by this dividend yield. Now, be wary that this dividend yield is in percent. So you're going to have to put it in decimals, meaning you would have to divide by 100, which then would make this dividend yield 0, 0.00, right? Move it two to the left and you will get 0. 0.0042 decimal point, like number, not percent, but, but as a decimal. And this would give you a whopping $238,100. You would need to invest to get $1,000 a year from Apple. Okay. So as you guys can see, it is a really, really high number, but again, it's all based off of this yield. If we do the same math, when it comes to Chevron now, as you guys remember, Chevron does have a dividend yield of 4.03%. So if we do the exact same thing, a thousand dollars per year from Chevron, and we do a thousand divide this by 0.0403, right? This gives you 24,000 $813.90. Let's just round up to $25,000. So that's actually not a lot of money in comparison to that of Apple, because at the end of the day, it is all based off of this dividend yield. So in this case, you know, 
Chevron would technically be a better kind of company to invest in from a dividend perspective. But again, you also have to take into account everything else I spoke of when it comes to the cash flow, when it comes to the payout ratio, when it comes to all of these things in order to make a very clear and very sound decision as to what company to buy. But nonetheless, though, this is how you would calculate how much money you would have to invest into an individual company to get the payments that you want on a yearly basis. So that was a lot of information as you guys just saw. And I highly encourage you guys to watch it back um, as many times as possible to actually understand it. But let's move now into the benefits of having dividend passive income. And the main one is the most obvious one. And that is the fact that, well, let's just say that you are able to supplement your whole entire income from active income to passive income this allows you to no longer have to go to a nine to five job which then gives you the freedom to live wherever you want you're not really subjugated to live in a specific area because of a job you could pack up and move whenever you want or you could just keep moving around as many times as you would like because even around the world because this really because no matter where you are the dividends are going to get paid to your account as long as you are alive, right? And even then, even after you die, you can always pass it on to your kids or your wife and they'll continue to be getting paid out. So that's the main benefit right there, the freedom and just the flexibility from everything, right? You know, you're no longer tied down to a certain location because of a job. That's the main thing. And the second thing has to do with, of course, taxes, which if you guys have been on the channel, you guys know, Taxes is one of the topics I love to talk about. And what you're looking at over here, this is the tax bracket for active income, meaning the income that you get from going to your nine to five job. And you guys could see that, um, well, the numbers are very, very high. First of all, it's a progressive tax rate where, you know, once you hit a certain threshold, then any dollar above that threshold gets taxed at that new one instead of stacking. So please understand that difference right there. However, most people, I would argue, would land along the lines of 22% when it comes to single as well as married filing jointly. Maybe with single, you would land along the lines of like 12%. But for all intents and purposes, let's take a look at single and more specifically married filing jointly. And we can see that for 2025, which this is for 2025, guys, we can see that between $48,476 to $103 thousand three hundred and fifty dollars single you pay 22 percent and then Mary filing jointly it does go up right the bracket does go up to now ninety six thousand nine hundred and fifty one dollars to two hundred and six thousand seven hundred dollars now this incentivizes you yes a to get married i fully understand that but dividends have a separate tax bracket which is not taught in school and this is something that I really encourage everybody who's watching this to please, please, please learn more about. So looking at the dividend tax bracket, it is night and day when it comes to this difference. For starters, people who file single from zero to $48,350, you would now pay 0%. Whereas active income from basically already at zero, you're already paying 10% for starters. And up to the 48,000, you are now paying 10, 12, and 22% respectively as per each tax bracket, right? So right then and there, you're already paying 22% if you're single filing married to the 48,000, whereas when it comes to dividends, roughly the same, it's 0%, guys. 0%, absolutely crazy. And the next tax bracket up for single, it is $48,351 to $533,400. You get taxed at 15%, which if we come back over here, this is upwards of 35% if you're single filing your taxes. Absolute night and day when it comes to this and the differences actually become more extreme with married filing jointly if you guys take a look at this one more time married filing jointly for dividend tax rate from zero to ninety six thousand seven hundred dollars you pay zero in taxes most people right now between the ages of 20 to 29 30 make under 
$100,000. And doing a very quick Google search, we can see that the overall median yearly income, the median, not the average, but the median yearly income, it is $74,600. And the average salary, guys, it is $62,027 a year, which yeah, if we take a look at these tax brackets one more time, we could see that this would land you, well, if you're single, this would land you at the 22%, right? And if you're married filing jointly, first of all, you would have to sum your wife as well. But let's assume that that even comes into, you know, your overall total of the, of the median and the average, it would still land you at 12%. Whereas if it's dividends alone, right, just dividends alone from one person, you can still be married and still have dividends just from one person. Well, um, this median and average would land you at the 0% tax bracket for dividends if you're married finally and jointly and at the 15%, which is a lot lower than that of the active income if you're filing single. So if you are married filing jointly and you land under that $96,700 mark when it comes to dividends, you are now paying $0 in federal income taxes based on qualified dividends. Fully understand that one, guys. Qualified dividends, not non-qualified dividends. But there's also another type of tax bracket that dividends also help you with, and that is the state tax brackets as well, because this does count as income. And remember, because now you have dividend income, you are no longer tied to an area based off of a job, and you can now move anywhere within the 50 states. And there are states that are very, very beneficial when it comes to uh, income in general. And the states that have zero income tax are Wyoming, South Dakota, Nevada, Texas, Tennessee, and Florida. And I can't forget this time, Alaska. So yeah, you have this kind of dividend. You're making near $100,000 a year. You no longer pay income taxes at the federal level. And now you can say, okay, I'm going to move now to a state like, I don't know, Texas, Wyoming, whatever. And you now pay zero in state income taxes, which essentially eliminates all income taxes for you in general. You still have to file it at the end of the year, but if you have kids, you actually get refunds for these dividends to begin with. In fact, let me actually prove this to all of you. Let's take a look at income tax calculator by calculator.net. And let's pretend like we're going to file for taxes. And we're going to put the file status as married filing jointly. Then we're going to put no young dependents, no other dependents. Let's do those later. And now when it comes to income, let's make this wages and tips and other compensations as zero, as well as the federal income tax was held zero. Okay. Because we're going to put everything when it comes to dividends alone. Second person, wife, also zero. Now when it comes to other family incomes, well, we got qualified dividends right over here. So let's put right under that $96,700, let's say around $95,000, all right? So let's just put in over here. So let's just put in over here $95,000 when it comes to, right, that's $95,000. Yes, it is. $95,000 as qualified dividends. Now, no kids, just married and a wife, uh, $95,000 a year in qualified dividends. Calculate, we get, look at that. Look at that zero percent absolutely gorgeous right absolutely gorgeous again you do have to file these taxes you do have to file these taxes even though you know you're not paying anything you still have to file them guys please do not break the law you still have to file them so let's actually put in now that you have a kid under 16. let's just put in one and same thing married for filing jointly everything else zero ninety five thousand dollars once again in order and qualified dividends hit calculate you now get a refund of two thousand dollars for having that one kid and basically making $95,000 a year in dividends. If you put in two kids at this point, right, that I think it doubles if I'm not mistaken. Everything else the same. Yeah, it doubles now $4,000. Absolutely insane. So there you guys have it. Uh, when it comes to dividends, there's a lot of benefits, right? The taxes benefits and the freedom benefit, which it really is something that you can't get back because at the end of the day, time is the most important of any asset that you will get. So all in all, 
Yes, I understand, guys, that it's going to take a long time to get that $95,000, right? If you do the math, if you put $95,000 into one company, you're going to get near, depending on the dividend yield, but you're going to get near something between two to $2.5 million invested to get that $95,000. So it is a lot, but it's actually not as bad as y'all think. First of all, it's all about slow and steady, right? But at the same time, it's not just you pulling the weight. Now, at the beginning, it's mainly you pulling the weight. But the more you invest, the more dividends you get paid. You can then take those dividends and reinvest it back. So if you're basically investing, let's just say $1,000 a month, and you slowly build up that dividends to make it $1,000 a month, now you're not investing $1,000. Now you're investing $1,000 for you and $1,000 from dividends. That's $2,000 a month. It shows the... It's, which gives you a nice compounding rate when it comes to these dividends. So yes, 2 to 2.5 million does seem like a lot, but at the end of the day, slow and steady is what wins the race. And that is essentially, guys, all I want to talk about in this video. I know rather long, but I figured I'd make it informative because it's something that I haven't talked to you on the channel. You know, the intricacies of the whole qualified dividends. Now, again, qualified dividends, does that mean non-qualified dividends? And that will probably be a separate video. So with that said, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as normal. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. If you'd like to join us on the Discord, which is the best place to cast these videos, live streams, and shorts. The link to that is in the description below. It's available for free. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.